We saw in a previous video that the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x is 1, provided x is in radians. So the definition of a limit tells us that we can make this thing here as close as we like to 1 by making x sufficiently close to but not equal to 0. So that means that sine of x over x is approximately equal to 1, provided that x is close enough to 0. So x must be small, so by small x must be approximately 0 but not equal to 0. The function isn't even defined at 0, because if at 0 we get 0 divided by 0, which is indeterminate. So we can make sine x over x as close as we like to 1 by making x sufficiently close to 0. And x can approach 0 from the left or the right. So x in this relation here could be positive or it could be negative. But as long as it's close to 0, then this thing here will be close to 1. And the approximation gets better and better as x gets closer and closer to 0, but never equaling 0 sine of x over x will get closer and closer to 1. Now since x is never equal to 0, we can take this relation here and multiply both sides by x. We don't have to worry about multiplying both sides by 0, which would mess everything up. Okay, so we're multiplying both sides by something that's not 0. So sine of x is approximately equal to x. Now this is a useful simplification in uh, physics and other applications. If x is in radians and close enough to zero, um, sine of x can be replaced by x. To see that more clearly we are going to look at a simulation. We are going to compare x to sine of x for values of x that are close to zero. So first of all I want to explain this construction. We make our angle x the angle in a sector of radius 1. Let L be the length of this arc. Well, we know that if x is in radians, then it's defined to be the length of the arc L divided by the radius. But the radius is 1, so we get L divided by 1, which is L. So x in radians is the number of times the radius divides into the arc length. So when the radius is 1, the arc length is equal to the angle in radians. To bring the sine of angle x into this picture, we need to consider a right angle triangle. So we drop a perpendicular from this point here down onto this line. So now we form the right angle triangle. The side opposite x in the right angle triangle we will call h. In this construction, the sine of x is the side opposite angle x divided by the hypotenuse. So we have h divided by 1, which is h. So we see that the length of this line here is equal to the sine of angle x. This idea is not new to us. We saw this when we were considering the coordinates of a pint on a unit circle. That is the coordinates of a pint on a circle of radius 1. The y value of the pint was given by the sine of this angle. Now here x is 0.78944 radians. This is about 45 degrees. This would be pi over 4 radians. Um, there's the arc. It's the same as 0.78944. Here's the sine. So there's a bit of a discrepancy. Now let's make x approach 0. Here we have an angle of 0.18081 radians. This angle here is about 10 degrees. We can see that the two decimal places, when x is about 10 degrees, um, the sine of x in radians is the same. This number to two decimal places is 0.18. Here x is 0 0.03619 radians. This is about 2 degrees. And you can see that the sine of x in radians is um, accurate to four decimal places. To four decimal places, this is 0 0.0362, and this is also 0 0.0362. As a matter of fact, for angles x less than five degrees, um, the sine of x in radians is very close to x in radians. 
Intuitively, that all makes sense because this line here is getting closer and closer to the length of the arc as we make x smaller and smaller. These two red lines um, get closer and closer in length. We can also consider the graph of sine of x and the graph of x and we can see that both graphs are nearly identical for values of x close to zero. We can zoom in on this graph and you can see how close both x and sine of x are for values in the neighborhood of zero.